has been one of those students, or ex-students, who has returned to Mwollombao on a number of occasions in the three years since he has left. At present, Lucas has just finished a nine-month stint in what we would call national service. In other words, you go into one of the military forces, which is compulsory right throughout Europe, you do your nine months, and then you go out either to, um, as a result, you might go into the workforce or you might go off to university. Lucas has now completed that, and I, would, I am assuming that uh, whilst he was in there, he met one of his friends, Raphael Taika, who has also just finished. They've now returned here, bought a dreaded 1986 Toyota van, and of course they are doing exactly what we do when we go over to Asia and Europe. They are touring around, backpacking, so to speak, for the next three months. I'd like to call Lucas to the stand to talk about his impressions of what he believes Harmony Day is from a very, very different national perspective. Lucas and uh, Raphael, thank you very much. So, we in Germany, we don't have a Harmony Day, so this is very special for us to be here at your school and uh, have a talk, experience uh, your Harmony Day and uh, that I'm allowed to be able to speak to you, it's a great pleasure. So, uh, what is actually Harmony? Harmony is acceptance. In Germany we say Harmonie and also uh, Akzeptieren. Akzeptieren. In Spain they say Armonia or uh, in acceptance Aceptar. So it's in every language um, the same. So uh, everybody uh, is the same. Everybody has to be accepted. So, no matter what religion, race, sex, physical or psychological ability, everyone has to be accepted. No matter who and who he is, what he thinks, and how he looks like, and how he acts. So, we are all a multi. We are a, a multicultural society. Uh, we have many nations, as you can see at your school, there are many nations uh, um, in your school. As we also have in Europe, a lot of nations. So um, your country is about, I guess, maybe 10 times bigger than Germany. So, and you've got 20 million people living he here, and we've got about 80 million. Mm. And uh, our countries are very close to the other countries. So uh, we got a lot of tourists and a lot of people from other countries in our country as well. For example, we've got Turkey, no, Turkish people in Germany and uh, there's a big population of Turkish people. They, uh, in every corner of the street you can find a Duna kebab and uh, yeah. And we, we have to accept them. Be because they are also humans, so they come to our country, uh, they want to know how it is uh, to live in Germany. Maybe they get um, a better education in Germany than, they, and then they, uh, than in their original country. Um, they all have reasons to come to another country. For example, you know uh, Africa, in the north there is Morocco, and there are many people coming from Africa to Morocco, and then they get into little boats and little fishing boats, like in a little boat, I don't know, you know the fishing boats here on the river? There might be 50 people in there. 
and they get over the ocean, uh, over the Mediterranean Sea. And there are sometimes storms there and they die. And they are always trying to get to Europe. Why do they do this? Because they think they get a better life, a, a better life in Germany. So it's hard to explain, but uh, the government controls the borders, of course, as they do here too. The quarantine. We had to wait uh, like half an hour at your quarantine station in Brisbane. And in Sydney, when I came here first in 2006, I had to wait like for an hour and they checked my luggage. Do you have medicine? Do you have food? Do you, what do you bring to Australia? So they check it, okay, but they have to accept me coming to your country. Oh, well, I'm very um, happy to be accepted and that we are allowed to come to your country. And we do the same thing in Germany. So if Australians come to Germany or from any other nations, we have to say hello and welcome them. Okay, because the world is one. So every human being should be allowed to be at any place on the earth where he likes to be. Okay, and well, that's not the end. <laughs> okay, sometimes uh, I'm talking a little bit too much. Okay, I hurry up. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you can um, compare that to the Indians and the Hare Krishnas in Australia. They are also coming here and you should welcome them. And ah, I heard that there are a lot of Muslim communities in your country too, in Sydney for example. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not easy to accept them because they have uh, other ways of life and some people just come to your country and want to live in their communities and don't even accept, you, uh, accept your um, country, uh, your, your habits, your um, way of thinking. But you, you just have to accept them. It's not easy, but it, it's difficult, but it's manageable, I think. Okay, the bell's ringing. <laughs> So, you always have to show respect to each other and um, think about how it would be to be in their position. You have to think how would it be to be the other one, to be the other guy from the other country. How would it be? When I came here, I came, got into a host family. Uh, I got a host family. You might know James Cowling, Michael Law, yeah. and Josh Cowling. Yeah, okay. Well, I, live, uh, I lived with their family for one year and uh, in Kondong and they uh, showed me everything and I was living there for free so I'm very very happy to uh, that the family accepted me and also friends I got um, do you know Nick Reef and them yeah yeah okay yeah well these are my friends I got to know them very easily and all the students uh, from from this school even teachers and other people they uh, um, remembered me, they said, hello Lucas, how are you? And I haven't seen them for four years. So that's great. To know people from other countries. Yeah. So um, I see there is no cause for discrimination or bullying. Um, it doesn't help. We are all humans and we've all got feelings. So that's it. How's that considering that?